song, I, I, and I'm not going to sing it. Some of you probably know it, but it used to say, real, real, Jesus is real to me. Oh, yes, he's given me the victory. So many people doubt it. I can't live without him. Jesus is real to me. Anybody ever heard that song? Anybody yeah. know it? Okay. Uh, if Jesus isn't real to you, then nothing else works. Yes. And all of your efforts and your endeavors, um, both physically and uh, spiritually, are really wasted efforts if he's not real to you. And the reality of Jesus Christ is not based in uh, your own personal theology. It's based in what the Word of God says. That's right. And if Jesus is going to be real to you, you've got to get a picture, a snapshot based on what the Word says. Amen? Amen? Let's lift our hands in the presence of the Lord this morning. Father, we thank you. We entreat you this morning. We worship you as the living God, the creator of the universe, greater than our minds can conceive, holier than all of our teaching and theology can present. You are righteous. <laughs> You are perfect in all the ways. You are indeed a good, good father. You are Jehovah Shalom, the God of all peace and comfort. You are Jehovah Jireh, the God who supplies. You see the need in advance and supply that need. You are Jehovah Sikinu, which is our righteousness. We thank you for being everything that we need you to be. Father, we just move ourselves positionally from a place of infancy to a place of maturity by choosing this morning to open our hearts, our minds, our alert, and our spirits to be in tune with what you're saying this morning. Father, we minimize distractions intentionally. Come on, come on now. We stop the spirit of distraction, which would cause us to get off course and move us into a place where we can't hear from you correctly. We need to hear you greater. The days, the days that are in front of us are challenging. The days that are behind us are gone. So we press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling, which is found only in Christ Jesus this morning. Father, we repent and ask you to forgive us of our sin. And allow us, God, to come into a free flow, liberty, relationship with you. You're not holding our sins against us. Come on. This morning, we've come to receive from you. We've poured ourselves out in praise and worship. Now, God, we want to be filled again. Anybody want to be filled again this morning? Yes. Fill us up now. Lord, like the deer that panteth for the water, so our souls long for you. Like a bird that would sit in the nest waiting for the feeding of the, the, the parents, Lord God. We just open ourselves up to be fed by the Holy Spirit. Feed us this morning, Father. Ah, glorious God, we love you so much. Our actions don't line up with our words many times, but God, you are not a God that moves by our actions you're moved by what you see in our heart so that our hearts be clear and clean. Receive us and receive our worship and praise. Feed us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Can you say amen to that? Turn with me to the book of uh, Galatians. We're going to go back there this morning. Certainly delighted for each one of you that are here. Thank you for being faithful and coming out, being in the house of God. Kind of scattered, so i got to walk around more today probably than I would normally. Make sure I make eye contact with some fix I haven't seen in a little while. Amen. Glad you're here. To our first time guests, we're certainly glad that you're here. We welcome you. We also welcome our YouTube audience. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate the fact that you have found this channel. We ask you, invite you to subscribe to LifePoint Christian Faith Center. We are here at 1221st Avenue in the city of Coralville, Iowa, located right at the junction of I-80 and 1st Avenue in Coralville. We have a warm seat of welcome open for you. We want you to come on down. And if you're there and you're not in the local area, find something to write with. Take good notes. Make sure that you open yourself up to whatever God is saying to you this morning. We believe he's speaking to your hearts this morning. That's why you've tuned in. Would you welcome our YouTube audience and our first time guests this morning? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Would you give me 45 minutes on the clock, please? I want to, as expeditiously as I can, I want to go through this. And uh, I want to pick up where I left off last week. For those of you that weren't here last week, you'll have to tune into the YouTube channel or talk to the media team to see how you can get the message. But this is part two of walking in the spirit. And we are moving rapidly by the leading of the Holy Spirit to the place where God wants us to be, what I believe God wants us to be in terms of maturity. Maturity does not look like what we've identified it as many times as, you know, gray hair. Let me look this way. No hair. 
<laughs> I'm just saying, you know. You know, wrinkles and whatever. Maturity is not based. You can be in the church. The church is the one entity, unlike many others, where you can be in the church. You can come into the kingdom of God as a youngster. And I, I'll define youngster, let's just say 17 years old. And you can come in and as a 17 year old, you can outgrow a 40 year old very quickly. Because it's not based on your intellectual capacity as much as it is your hunger for God. Hunger for God does not look like what many of us have identified it as in the past. And we talked a little bit about this last week. Growing up in a Pentecostal church, what, what happened for me was that we identified spiritual uh, activity and used it to say that we were spiritual because we shouted and danced. And then there's some who sat somberly in a church because of the upbringing. I've had many people tell me that they've, they've, they were at churches where the pastor stood at the podium and never deviated from the podium and just read whatever, yeah. right? And that was common. And so if you, if you move, then you distract the person that's watching. So it cannot be identified based on those things that we think. Rather. The, the spiritual maturity that we find as identified by the Apostle Paul in Scripture and by Jesus is that we find a way to love one another as we love ourselves. Hmm. Interesting. Let's keep going. Turn with me to Galatians. Uh, let's go to Galatians 5, if you would, please. We left off here last week. I want to pick up right here. And I want to start at verse 16. I'm reading from the Expanded Bible. I'm also going to read from my, my Moffat's translation today. A little bit, as God would give me grace to do so. Galatians 16, 5 and 16, excuse me, if you have a say, amen. He says, so I tell you, who's, who's talking here? Come on now, this is interactive. Who's talking? Who's he talking to? The church at Galatia or the Galatians. Now, and that in this context, we talked about this. My wife and I were discussing this the other day, and I want you, I'm going to tell you everything that I know. And it's up to you to verify that it's true and accurate. All right. It's not up to me. It's up to you. Yeah. You ever hear about the brothers, the Bereans? When Paul talked to them and ministered to them, it was their responsibility and their desire that went back to make sure that everything that Paul said was scripturally accurate. Right. Yeah. And that's yours and ours. Okay? But I've come as I'm maturing in this thing. And I'm not matured. I'm not mature. I wish I was mature, but my wife would tell you, that she sees me in places and times that I don't look very mature, if you asked her, if I'm not around. Because <laughs> she would never embarrass her husband, isn't that right? But she's seen things about me that she can identify in my flesh, come on now, that don't look very mature. I'm willing to bet you, I'm willing to bet you that if I followed you around for a week and you didn't know I was there, if you didn't know I was there, uh, I'm willing to bet you probably would do some things that don't look very mature spiritually. I, I know you look spiritual in here. And I know you look real mature in here. But this is not the identifying characteristic of how mature you really are. When somebody takes your parking spot, when somebody pushes in front of you in front of, in Walmart in the line, you, you know you was. <laughs> huh? When, when things don't go the way you expect them to go, that's when maturity really manifests. Are you with me? So, so anyway, so in, 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 lo in looking at this, what I recognize about the Apostle Paul and his writing to the church at Galatia, what he's doing is he's, he doesn't know he's writing to the whole world. Please stay with me because I'm not, I'm not going to go slow here. I'm going to try to speed up and I'm going to gain momentum. He's rather speaking to, to a group of people that he's been around, he's invested time with, and he's recognized that these people have these characteristics in their life. And what has happened by the power of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God decides that all Scripture has been inspired and breathed by God. Let me, let me say it a different way. If I write a love note to Lynette and she and I exchange love notes, 
If you pick up on it somewhere down the line, I didn't write it to you. I wrote it to her. But if by the power of the Holy Ghost, there's something in the love letter that that identifies what great love I have for Lynette. And you say, my God, if, if a man can have that kind of love for a woman, somebody surely can love me, too. You have picked up on the wisdom of God that was not necessarily intended for you. Are you hearing me this morning? So when the Apostle Paul writes here, he's writing to the church at Galatia and he says to them in verse 16, he says, so I tell you live by following in the power of the spirit. Again, we talked about this last week. He says, then you will not do what your sinful self or your flesh wants. Your flesh wants your flesh never gets enough. The, 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 back when we first started a church years ago in, in Fort Worth, our first church endeavor that never really got off the ground because the Lord intended for us to be here and we finally became obedient. Um, I taught a series of messages on flesh gone wild. Some of y'all snicker because y'all know where that come from. Your flesh can go absolutely wild on you. And it can have appetites and desires that you never intended for it to have. But because it's under the guise and the leadership of your soul and your mind and not your spirit, or not the spirit, I should say, the next thing you know, you're out of control in your flesh. And many people live like that day by day by day, satisfying fleshly desires. So Paul says here, he says here that you will not do what your sinful self wants. Verse 17, our sinful self wants what is against the spirit and the spirit wants what is against our sinful self right he goes on to say the two are against or opposed or hostile toward each other so you cannot you need to underline that word that's a very powerful word and very and i told you last week this is one of my favorite passages of scripture this is a very significant word you cannot do just what you please in other words Your flesh is never going to be subdued until you make a decision that you are a spirit being living in Christ Jesus. And it's not going to be based on how you feel about it. Mm. Yesterday, we had a very powerful men's group, men's meeting yesterday. Those of you that weren't there, you should have been there. You really missed some things. Um, In the process, I got to take this off because I don't know why I feel so constrained. Is that okay if I take this off? Um, thank you. Uh, that feels better. In the process of our talking yesterday, what we understood and, and what I want you to understand is that your flesh has already been crucified with Christ. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. And with the understanding of that, you're going to face daily battles and challenges that tell you otherwise. Satan's number one job is to deceive us. And, and, and actually, let me backtrack a little bit. His number one job is to kill us. Because the Bible says he has come to steal, kill, and destroy. So if he can't kill you, he'll steal from you. And if he can't steal from you, he'll destroy you. He'll do his best to do that. But he's not going to do it so much in a, in a physical sense. He's going to do it right here. Right here. This is where the battle really is won or lost. Because spiritually, guess what? We're born again. Y'all looking at me like, "Mm." we're born again and we are crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, not I, but Christ lives in me. That's a spiritual reality. You can't change it. How you feel about it doesn't change it. What you think about it doesn't change it. You have been crucified with Christ. So your flesh now has been submitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Can I go on? In being submitted to that, Jesus bought, 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 paid the price for yours and my sin. Uh, Okay, we're going to see how many people are religious in the room. 
in buying my sin, it doesn't belong to me anymore. If I pay for your car and give it to you, it's yours. But if I pay for it and hold the title, it's still mine. Jesus paid the price and the penalty for sin and it still belongs to him. He redeemed us, right? We're bought with a price. Y'all know this, right? Why is that necessary in understanding? Because if we don't understand that, we're going to walk around on a day-to-day basis feeling like I'm guilty because I did this. And as long as you are feeling guilty, you cannot be free at the same time. So his job is to make you feel guilty. And if I were asking a poll and ask everybody in the room to be honest, every hand would go up in here feeling like you're more guilty than free. Most of the time. Right. Okay. Now, with that backdrop, let's keep reading because I really do want to get somewhere. All right. So he says here. He says the two are against or opposed or hostile toward each other. What he's talking about the spirit. Now say Holy Spirit. Spirit. Now say my flesh. He says each other so that you can do you cannot do just what you please. But verse 18, if the spirit is leading you. Is the spirit leading you? I'm more concerned about that in this day and age than anything else in the church. Is the spirit leading us? Because because see. Oh, God, help me. If I were to go to North Korea and be speaking in a North Korean church, which would be an underground church. By the by their very presence of being at at a service that is illegal in that country. I would have to assume reasonably that they were being led by the spirit to be there. Would you agree with that under penalty of death? Would you serve the Lord under penalty of death, even if you lived in the United States? Don't be quick to answer, because I'm going to ask this question. Would you be quick to serve the Lord and attend fellowship services (laughs) even when there's no penalty because you love him enough and you're obeying the leading of the spirit? See the difference? And so what happens here, Paul writes to these folks and he's letting them know he says listen what what you're doing now because you are a spirit man or woman everything you do is being led by the spirit of god oh god help me <laughs> turn turn hold your place there turn to second corinthians 5 i think i want to go to second corinthians 5 let me see i mm, 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 mm. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 16. Second Corinthians 5, verse 16. You have it? Say amen. He says, from this time, same writer, same author, but what's different? Thank you. Say it louder. Different church. Different church. Same writer. You get that? Okay. Verse 16 says, from this time on, we do not think of anyone as the world does. In the past, we thought of Christ, the world thinks, but we no longer think of him in that way. Verse 17, listen now, please hear what I'm saying and you need to mark your Bibles. If anyone belongs to Christ, there is a new creation. Right? Or, this says, that person has become a new creation. The old things have done what? Passed away. My translation says they're gone. They cannot be gone and be present at the same time. The only way they can be present is through what? Right here. Right here. You're thinking. Do you, are, you, are you beginning to see this? It is not... You know, when I get born again, when I got born again because of the way I was raised, look up at me for a minute. What they told me was that there were certain things that I, I talked about this last week. Again, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time here. But there were certain things that I 
couldn't do, couldn't, couldn't go to movies, couldn't play sports. I mean, really, they wouldn't let you play sports back in the day. I mean, you know, that's how it was. They wouldn't let you do these things, okay? They frowned on it and said you shouldn't do this. You should wear this and you shouldn't wear this. And all of these external things trying to identify a spiritual reality. It does not work from the outside in. It must work from the out. And until you tell me how I am, how my dress relates to who I am on the inside, I will still dress like I just came off the street and see nothing wrong with it. Now, with that being said, they told me that, you know, uh, the, the, some of the music. I, now, I like jazz music. Exactly. Who said, whoa, there's a revelation for you. Well, you know, isn't it worldly? Well, isn't everything worldly? Oh, OK. I thought I was talking to. OK. Isn't everything worldly? In a sense, it is. Everything that you deal with out there is on a worldly day to day basis. So then why am I more spiritual on Sunday than I am Monday through Saturday? Or why am I trying to be that? Because I'm not understanding that all things now are of God. And the, 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 the filter with which I gauge what I watch, what I listen to, what I yield myself to is flows right through the power of the Holy Spirit on the inside of me. So it causes me to no longer to want to listen to certain types of music. It causes me to no longer to want to dress a certain way because I want to identify with the one who has bought me and paid this with me. So he goes on to say, he says, it, same, same place over here in 2 Corinthians, he says, the old things have gone, everything is made new, all this is from God who through Christ made peace between us and himself and gave us the work of telling everyone about the peace we can have. To me, I, I think we miss that so simply because we just don't tell enough people about the peace that we have and where it came from. I'm at peace this morning. I'm not at perfection. Robin, I want to be at perfection. But you know what it costs for me to be at perfection? <laughs> Yielding up this body. It means I'm going to have to release this body because the only time I'm going to be perfect is when I'm with him. And I'm, not talking about, I'm talking about with him physically. When he says, Tommy, come home. Perfection. Amen. Till then, I have to contend earnestly for the faith. Amen? Turn back, turn back over to... I think you got it. So let me keep moving. So Galatians 5, what verse did I leave you at? Verse 18. But if the spirit is leading you, you are not under the law. The wrong things the sinful self does, the works of the flesh, sinful nature are clear. I'm going to get into that in just a second. But I want to I make sure that we understood the beginning of that verse. Because there's so many people that focus on what I'm getting ready to read in terms of the sinful flesh. And I don't even have to read it. I bet you can close your so you could probably quote most of this because you heard it so much from other preachers. I know I did. I don't know about you. But, but look at verse 18, the beginning of again. But if the spirit is leading you, you are not under the law. What is the significance of the law? Can I, can I, can I do a little bit? The significance of the law, and it's not just the Mosaic law, but it is the law and the command of God. The significance of the law is that you cannot be you can't be what God has not created you to be. In other words, in other words, listen, come here, son. Let me borrow you for a minute. Son stands here. As him standing here, stand over here to your left, face them. As him standing here, he has been made by God because he yielded himself, accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. He is a new creation that has never existed before. He just hasn't existed before. So the old TJ, that's his name for those of you who don't know, the old TJ is not there. He is not present here. The apostle says, starts off by saying this, back over it, over it, after later, he says, from this point forward, we don't measure anything after what we see with our eyes. My wife was up here talking, I was going to say this. Never let your eyes determine what your heart believes. It may say that you're, you're, you're going to be evicted, but don't let that move you. It may say that you've got cancer, but don't let that move you. Come on, somebody. So in looking at him, I don't look at him, even though I knew him once before. 
before I knew him to be a a just a terrible person in the flesh. But once he belongs to Christ, all of that in the image of God now shows up like Jesus. And what people don't see is they don't see Jesus standing in front of you. They see your activity and they see man because spiritually they are not mature enough to look beyond what they see you doing into who you are. Who you are is greater than what you do. Oh, God, help me. So Paul says this to a group of people that he's getting ready to call them out. Roger, you're getting ready to put them on blast. Let's put them on blast, shall we? Now, I'm not putting my brothers and sisters on blast. How can I draw the distinction? I, I feel like teaching this morning. So how can I draw the distinction between putting, my, putting these people on blast as opposed to my brothers and sisters what's the distinction number one you are filled with the Holy Ghost if you didn't say amen we need to we need to stop service right now huh you are filled with the Holy Ghost I said you with the Holy Ghost I said you are filled with the Holy Ghost do I need to say Holy Spirit will I get a better response hallelujah because that equalizes everything and brings me to a place where no longer do I have to rely on Tommy's intellect, Tommy's ability. I can rely on the living God, the source of all things. That's the place to be. So these Galatians, they didn't know this. Paul is getting ready to tell them this. Isn't that right? He gets ready. He lays it out. Let's look at it real quick. Verse 19, the wrong things that the sinful self does. Now, what is the sinful self? Somebody tell me it is the what? The flesh. Is the flesh you? It is not. It can't be. Oh, God, help me. Do you see, do you see how, how we, the flesh is, say, say that one more time, what you just said. Not anymore. We just read it on 2 Corinthians 5. You can't be both. You cannot be. Just like I had, you can't be both. And this is a spiritual reality. This is not a natural understanding. But naturally, we've tried to see it, so we've tried to figure it out. Oh, we've said things like, oh, you know, uh, uh, what's that old thing we hear all the time that we can't stand here? Uh, please uh, be patient with me. God is not done with me yet. That's a cop-out. <laughs> you know, well, you know, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. Another fallacy. You can't be both. And we've tried to be both. And in trying to be both, we enter into a life that talks about freedom and liberty in the Holy Ghost. And we've not even seen ourselves as filled with his power, filled with his love, filled with his grace, filled with his mercy, having been redeemed from the curse of the law, bought back with a price, the blood of Jesus covering us. And we're still trying to run around here trying to do something that's already been done. Yeah. Believe. Tell your neighbor, believe. believe. Just believe it. See how simple that is? Now, why is it hard for you to believe? Because your enemy does what you don't do. He will not stop until he convinces you that you are not worthy, that you are sick, that you are, that you are whatever he says you are. You are still the same old girl that was out there giving it up to anybody that asked. That you were the same old guy out there treating women like they was dogs and like they were a piece of meat. He going to tell you that. It's his job. He's good at it. Huh? And we got to be better at him, better than him at what we are called to be. But we don't get there without spiritual maturity. Evident or obvious is this. Being sexually unfaithful. A couple weeks ago, <laughs> I'm just me. Y'all can pull in your religious toes or not. I'll step on them. Don't matter to me. A couple of weeks ago, I talked about uh, uh, pornography in the sense of, you know, again, I got to look around the room to make sure I got an adult crowd. You know, masturbation. Both male and female. It's quiet up in this church. Because why? Because we have not learned that our bodies are a temple of the Holy Ghost. And if we would learn that, it would, and Paul was telling them, I'm just telling you what Paul was telling them. Paul was telling them, you can't be sexually unfaithful. 
Okay, I better move on because that's, 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 that's not a good topic. No, it's the best topic I got. Because he says it here. Now, if I have been that way, then I'm not that way anymore. And I have to recognize that if I was dirty Tommy or terrible Tommy back in the day, now I got to be Tommy that has been born again the power of the Holy Ghost and I have to use the power of the Spirit to resist the urges of my flesh and overcome him by the power of God. I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't You know, we, we had this conversation a little bit in men's group. Men's group, this is what we do. I ain't going to put nobody on blast. I'm going to tell you a little bit of what we had. If we had more women that understood how men are made and created, we wouldn't have as much sexual impropriety as we have in our society. Yes. We have men's meetings, but we don't include the women. We need, I think we need to have the women eavesdrop on what we talk about many times, because as long as my wife knows what's really going on up here, less chance of me being unfaithful in here. Yeah. Oh. Janice, is that okay? I asked one of my elders, yeah. And, and because, you know, men are from whatever, Mars. Mars and women are from Venus, whatever the case is. I say that God created male and female. Amen. He created both of us unique because the, women, the men don't understand how important it is to communicate with them. Instead of trying to cut them off and dominate them, let them be who they are called to be. And you might have a whole better life going on. I'll move over here. It's interesting that he starts off with sexually unfaithful. In 2018. <laughs> Let me keep going. Y'all looking at me like what? Not being pure. Taking part in sexual sins. Let's talk about let's, I'm just going to read what he has here. Depravity. God help us. <laughs> You know, I do read the news. I kind of filter it through um, the power of the spirit. And, and, and in the process of doing that, I've got a rag in there somewhere. I think it's in the backside anymore. Um, saw, saw where uh, it's, it's common news. So if you haven't read it, so be it. Uh, uh, Miss K former Miss Kentucky sent some nude peach. Year old. <laughs> Anybody read that beside me? Anybody see that? You ain't see that? It's there. Read it. You know, remember what I said? Flesh gone wild. What, 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 what does a 28-year-old former cucky have any business sending nude pictures to a 15-year-old male? Depravity. The absence of God and the absence of understanding of how her body and his, 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 his uh, uh, makeup, they, 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 you know, I, I'm just saying, you know, yes, they're both male and female. On some level, there has to be a there has to be an understanding that that just does not fit the plan of God. It's not even morally correct, and it, and, and, and and really, it's not that shocking. We've heard worse, not anymore. Come on now, stop looking at me like that. Y'all know I'm telling the truth, right? So Paul is, but Paul is, he's, he's, what he's doing is like, you know, when you sit in the dentist chair and the dentist tells you that you have to have a root canal. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, okay, mentally, unless you've got a mouth that's totally oblivious and, and, and you don't, you know, even the needle, I hate the needle going in. Good God, the needle is worse than the, than the uh, extraction or whatever they're going to do. But Paul, what he's doing is he's reaching into the, the soul. Can, let me use you. I got to watch my speaker. He reaches into the, the soul, the mind of the man, yeah. and says, listen, let me identify for you what will not work in the kingdom of God. What God has done for you, Galatians, oh foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? Did you not receive this? Did you receive it by the working of the flesh or by the power of the Holy Ghost? Now, you got to remember where we came from. Book. So what he does, he says, I'm going to use you as an illustration. Roger, listen, the stuff that you used to do, you can't do it anymore. And externally, there's nothing in your flesh that's going to change, but it has to happen in your mind. And because you've accepted the freedom of the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit now is working.
inside of your mind to change the way you think about sexuality, about women, about men, about your money, about your health, about your body, about everything, because you are a new creation in him. And if he can't get into the mind, then he can't do any work. That's where it starts. So he starts pulling these things out. He starts saying, listen, somebody's got to tell you that idolatry or worshiping of gods doing witchcraft. I wish I could remember. We talked so much, you know, in, in our private time. We were talking about something, you know, and it's, you know, we can make a god out of anything. And I'll tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, God hates idolatry. He destroyed people groups behind idolatry. Somehow or another we think, well, you know, we're, we're new covenant people and I get that. But the measure of, of how much time I got? The measure of uh, his, 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 uh, um, God, I both sick here. his uh, judgment over us is not based on Old Testament law, it's based on New Testament love. And because of that, we won't, we won't, and we, this is one of the things we were talking about. When we stand before him, because we will stand before him, everybody. Everybody in this room is going to stand before him. Everybody, everybody. You might as well prep for that appointment because you ain't going to be able to get away from that one. When we stand before him, what's he going to do? He's not going to pull out Levitical law. He's not going to pull out the, the Torah. He's not going to pull out the rules of judgment from the Old Testament. What he's going to do, and I'm going to get, as soon as I can get to it, he's going to tell you, listen, I loved you. I sent my son for you. And in sending my son for you, everything I judge you now is going to be based on that law of love. And if you don't love yourself enough to keep yourself out of these situations, <laughs> out, out, out of idolatry and out of, out of sexually compromised position, you, you listen, 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 God, God doesn't send swift judgment the time that you do the deed, you know, you know. It, I gotta pray because you know I had a I had a I had a, a, a fling a, a one night thing and, and it didn't really turn into anything it wasn't intended to be anything but as a result of it it caused something y'all gotta use your imagination stay with me and in my doing that now I I, I feel guilty I feel like I'm I'm just oh my God like I, I am God listen you gotta get over that and recognize that God loves you even in the midst of what you did all you gotta do is give it up and say I repent. But if, listen, if you can't find a way to repent when you stand before him, if you continue to feel guilty and you don't love yourself, when you stand before him, he will literally say to you, I don't know who you are. Because I sent my love and you didn't accept it. I wish I could. Because his love far exceeds the things that Paul lists here. That's why he lists them. Not to judge you. I don't want to, you did this. I'm saying to you, man, don't do that anymore because God sent his love for you. His love looks like Jesus. Is this making sense? Taking part in sexual sins. Worshiping gods, idolatry. Doing witchcraft. Can I tell you something about witchcraft? I, <laughs> I will. I remember, I won't mention her name. You wouldn't know her anyway, probably, chances are. But you will know this individual. You, anybody ever heard of Mike Murdoch? Yeah. 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 Okay. Mike Murdoch was a 70s, 80s, very popular all around. He's not gone anywhere, as far as I know. There was a lady that came to our church back, wasn't, we weren't pastor, we were just part of the church. And I, and, and I found out that this lady said that Mike Murdoch was supposed to be her husband. Now, I'm not suggesting anything. Be careful, because I'll never know who's watching this, okay? But in the process of that, that never happened. And this lady would follow his ministry and actually follow him around the way the story's told and play at some of his, his ministry events and so on and so forth. She fully believed that it was supposed to be her husband. And unless I missed my guess last time I heard, that never happened. Never happened. Now, getting off of that lady and getting on to you and I, you cannot impose your will on somebody else and call it God. 
You can't tell somebody what you expect of them. Oh, God, help me this morning. TJ, I expect you to be better than you are. What right do I have to expect him to live up to my standards? My expectations are not his responsibility to live up to, even though he's my oldest son. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And when I try to even even to the to the marriage covenant of us being together almost going on 36 years now, when I try to get sway her, oh God, help me this morning, sway her to my thinking. Without submitting it to God first, I am a warlock. I am a witch trying to impose my will on her, and I'm trying to figure out why she can't stand to be around me. <laughs> and then we wonder why so many people can't stand to be around us. Because whenever we, we get around them, it's always about us, even, even passively. <laughs> God help me. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Father, we worship you this morning. Hallelujah. You are the great God of understanding and clarity. Jehovah Shalom, the peace of God into this room today. Every heart is free from condemnation and con conviction. Hallelujah. Let conviction come by the Holy Ghost, but condemnation must go in Jesus' name. Yes. Say amen to that. Amen. Oh, I'm running out of time. What time? Let me see your watch. Is my watch stopped? You don't have one on. Yeah, I have one on. That's a good one. I need to not have one on. 11.43. Thank you. Okay. All right. You you Thank you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hope everybody shares that. That's it. <laughs> he goes on to say hating or hostility. Oh, help me, Lord. What an environment we live in right now. My wife and I were talking the other day. Again, this is what we do. Mm -hmm. I hate you. Because you have a blue shirt on and I have a red one. I don't have to understand why you have it on. You just don't have what I have. And so the spirit of the age demands that I hate him. So because you're a Democrat and you're a Republican, if I'm this, if I'm in allegiance with you, then I, I will accept you even if I don't know you. But I know her, but I can't stand you because you do not have the same ideology as I have. I know we know worldly people like that. I'm not, he, Paul wasn't talking to the world. He was talking to the church. <laughs> okay. mm. Making trouble. <laughs> That's pretty self-explanatory, isn't it? Being jealous. Mm. Being angry. The, the, my, my, my parenthesis says rage. Being selfish. It's all about me. Subtly, though, because I don't want you to think, I think that it's about me. So what I want you to think is that I'm thinking of you before I think of myself. So if you really think that, then that way you won't think that I'm thinking about me. And I'm good at it because I am a manipulator. Making people angry with each other. God help us in this place. Dissensions. Causing divisions among people or factions. Clickish. <laughs> I, remember, I remember when I went to, my wife and I went to a, a church in Texas when we moved there from North Carolina. And we were there in the church. And uh, again, I was a person of color. Well, I guess I still am. But anyway. <laughs> moving, <laughs> moving into an environment that I wasn't accustomed to and when I got in the environment I could remember feeling a little bit out of place yeah. Yeah. feeling out of place I didn't take the time to figure out why but rather I figured listen to me I figured that white people are different than black people so that's what's going on or, or black people are different than white people so that's what's going on However you want to say that. And the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, you crazy. <laughs> now, I don't know how the Lord talks to you, but there's times he needs to remind me how crazy I can get. OK, he said, because of this right here, he said, you are you. What you're doing is you are identifying something that simply that simply does not exist. 
You've walked into a place of love. And because the person sitting on this side or this side may not look like one another, we, we dr listen, we draw on the, remember what I told you about the flesh lusting against the spirit and the spirit, don't forget that. So my flesh wants to gravitate to the worst thing and start talking about how bad white people are. And on the other side of the coin, my flesh as a, as a European wants to gravitate to the worst thing and talk about how black people that wear do-rags just... Y'all ain't hearing me this morning. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. And then, then, then that's why the greatest division in, on the planet, particularly in North America, on a Sunday is in the house of God because you got white in one church, black on another church, and, and the two of them can't find a place to meet because the preacher won't tell you the truth. How great thou art. Man. And when you understand his tactics, then he, there's nothing he can use against you. Right. Let me keep going. Let me keep going. I'm almost out of time. Okay. <clears throat> he says, feeling envy, verse 21, being drunk. There's a difference in drinking and being drunk. Oh, we're going to kill a cow right now, Doc. We're going to have some steak tomorrow. <laughs> What's the difference? Motivation. Motivation. I, this is a struggle for me. This is a legitimately so. I'm not going to get into all that. Some of you know my past. This is a struggle for me. But there's a difference in drinking and being drunk. Paul doesn't say drinking in the list. He says being drunk. He identifies in another place, being drunk wherein is excess. Now, I'm not advocating doing either. Don't go out here and say, Pastor Tommy said it was okay to drink. I didn't say that. I said that you have to be led by the spirit of the living God. Obviously, the Galatians had a problem with drunkenness. Yeah, they ain't saying amen. You say amen. She, and she is staunchly against alcohol because of what we had, she had to endure at a young age in our early marriage. Staunchly. But she's not going to get up and tell you that drinking is a sin. Because it's not. The Bible doesn't say it. You stop creating it and stop making it up. Look. Okay. 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 All right. I said it. You've got to do whatever you've got to do with it. Having wild and wasteful parties, carousings or orgies. I know, I know, right? And then like, ouch, because he's telling the truth. He's telling the Galatians. If, I don't know if I have enough energy to do it. And I certainly don't want to embarrass myself by falling out of the chair, but I feel like standing up in the chair. And say, listen, Paul is standing here and he's saying, listen, Galatia, hear me well. You got to doing this. It doesn't fit in the kingdom of God. And if I didn't catch you on the orgy, if I didn't catch you on the sexual impropriety, if I didn't catch you on the drunkenness, somehow or another, I'm going to catch you being jealous, being envious. It's, it's there. And he's not saying that you're a bad person. It's identifying character traits of the flesh that will not work when you're in battle against the spirit. The Bible says that the spirit lusts or wages war. My God, when you go to bed at night, the spirit of God is waging war against the powers of darkness, trying to keep you out of that bed, trying to keep you married, trying to keep you prosperous, trying to keep you whole. He's working overtime. Don't give him any, any help not doing it. Mm. <laughs> God, help me. Doing other things like these. <laughs> I like this. Doing other things like these. He says, I warn you. Now, as I warned you before, those who do these things will not inherit God's kingdom. They are blessing blockers. They are show stoppers. Stop the things that you used to do. Start walking in the spirit. How do I do that, Pastor Tommy? I wake up in the morning. And I say, Lord, hallelujah. Oh, as I groan getting out of the bed, waking up too early. Ah, 
anointing person. About six months ago, something changed. <laughs> and so I'm not a morning person anymore. A new reality. But, but whether my morning starts at 11 o'clock at night because I work third shift or whether it starts in the middle of the day because I work second shift, doesn't matter. My, the, the, the Bible says that his mercies are new every morning. My morning might be different from yours, but when I wake up and I come to a conscious state, I need to be able to understand that the spirit of the living God is now dressed for battle so that he can kill all of my enemies. He expects me to be an overcomer. He expects me to get up with a, a supercharged attitude. I may not feel like it, but there's something I know about him. And in knowing him, I know that I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus that loves me. I know I don't feel like I may not even look like it, Roger, but the Bible says that that's who I am. That's what I decide to be. And because I decide to be that, the power of the living God is already working. The angelic host is already surrounding me. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Every day, face death on the highways. Face, you face death in your workplace and don't even know it. Why? Because the power of God is there to protect you. And in your protection, others are delivered. Verse 22. This is my last verse. Well, next to last, I can give you one more. And that one's ultra important, so I'm not going to forsake it. I've been trying to get here for almost a year, if not longer. <laughs> Ain't no shame in my game. Just saying. Verse 22. Verse 22. Verse 22. You need to highlight it, underline it, stamp it on your forehead. Whatever you need to remember, you need to do this one. And it's interesting that the verse starts off with a conjunction. He lists all of these things that turn men and women's soul and ultimately jeopardize their kingdom inheritance. He lists them all, doesn't he? As many as he can. Come on now, don't just read the Bible just like, come on, come on, come on. Hear the spirit of the man. So he's done all of these things to list this depravity, this, this, this inhumanity to, to, to other, other humans and, and all of these things that trap us in, keep us in bondage because he's talking about freedom. So the opposite is bondage. These things that keep us feeling unworthy, unloved, depressed, manic. We feel, we feel so, so bad sometimes. It's, it's, and, 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 and my God, we are Christians. If we feel bad, what's the world got to look forward to? I don't want to serve your God when you don't ever smile. You don't never dance. I mean, I know you can't dance, but at least you could dance. You could try. <laughs> and you want me to serve that God. That God hasn't done much for you. you than, than, than two dead nickels and you want me to serve your God? So all of these things come and all of a sudden he's, he's dug it, man, like the root canal. He has dug all of the fowl out and he has placed it on the tray to go in the garbage and the garbage heap. Now, he doesn't leave you there with an open hole or open wound in your jawbone. He now is going to fill you up with something that's going to cause you to rejoice. It would be less than God to somehow or another identify all of your in inconsistencies. It's one thing to tell you, my wife said it things I need to fix but if all she do is beat me down I don't want to be around her much longer but she's smarter than that and God is much smarter than her as he's much smarter than me because by the time she gets done telling me these things she then heaps on the possibility of the kingdom existence and what it really looks like when I walk in freedom in the power of the Holy Ghost and he starts saying but but don't go to churches that don't finish that sentence Tell you what kind of dirty dog you are. But the spirit produces. Do you see this? 
he produces in you. Huh? That's why I told you it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Do what he says. He's going to produce in you the things that you and I need. He produces the fruit of what? Love of the spirit. Notice, and if your Bible doesn't have a capital on that spirit, you need to throw it in the trash. I'm serious about that. It is not your spirit. It is the Holy Spirit in you. If you got a Bible that don't do that, you need to trash it. Because if that's wrong, there's going to be a whole lot of stuff wrong. But, the, but he says the spirit is, or the fruit of the spirit is. We're going to stop right there. Maybe you'll come back next time. We'll talk some more about it. I did. But I got over here. Thank you very much. <laughs> Somebody listen. Turn to John. I'm not going to go on that verse, though. Turn to John 13. John 13. Are you getting anything out of this? Am I helping anybody? See, I can't, I can't get you blessed until religion. And religion has been dumped in you by the bucket load. I know it to be true. I'm not hating on my, my founding fathers and, and, and those that I love. I'm just saying that religion was dumped in me so hard that it, it, Roger, it almost choked off the rest of my life. Under that. Many of you, if the devil could have killed you in your religion, you know, I don't know. I wasn't ready for heaven. I was not ready for heaven. If he had killed me that time I was driving down there, driving, you know, in, in Hampton, Virginia, taking my babies, going to pick up my babies from my wife and I. We weren't born again from my wife and I was not at a club and I dropped her off and I was on my way to kids and went across town. And the next thing I remembered, I, I woke up in the middle of the highway going the opposite way. And there were no cars around. And I, I had passed out and my babies were in the back. Don't you know he would have rejoiced over something like that? Imagine my parents, imagine my wife having to de deal with that reality. Do you not know this stuff happens every day? He's trying to cut you off. He's trying to stop your life. Because now that you've got this information, you can cut him off. And not only can you cut him off, you can cut him off out of somebody else's life. Come on. <laughs> John 13. Did I say that? Mm, 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 mm. Well, let me make sure. I want to make sure. <laughs> so good. He is. This is most amazing. I'm missing a page out of my Bible. I kid you not. There's a page missing out of this Bible. I found this Bible. Um, I found this Bible. In, huh? Yeah. I found, I, found this, I, I found this Bible back in, when we lived in New York. I'm originally from there. From, we were living in upstate New York. And um, in the process of living there, um, I went into a, one of the rooms of the house. I didn't know the room leaked until I went in there to pray one day. <laughs> and it was raining and it was leaking. And so I looked in a box that was there because I hadn't, we had just moved in. I hadn't even, we hadn't even unpacked. And when I, when I, uh, opened this box it had this Bible and it's called a Moffat's Bible and it's very rare um, Amazon or eBay or something like that I don't know but they're very rare and Moffat was one of the first people to really translation did it in the 20s early 20s uh, but he did a translation which talks about God in a whole different way so I had the Bible rebound but I didn't know it was missing that page how about that so you learn something every day amen so still John 13 Thank you for being patient with me. I appreciate that. Okay. Verse 33. Who's talking? Jesus. Thank you. Jesus said. Now, where did we leave off in Galatians? But the fruit of the Spirit produces. What's the first one? Okay. Thank you. Just want to make sure you're paying attention. Jesus said, my children or little children which is a term of endearment. I will be with you only a little longer. Right? Now, look up at me for a minute. Hold your place there. Why is he saying that? Those of you guys know this. Why is he saying that? What's getting ready to happen? His crucifixion. His crucifixion. What else is getting ready to happen? 
Resurrection. But what, what, what's he getting ready to say? I won't be with you much longer. What is getting ready to happen? Say it louder. I will leave you a comforter. Okay. Who is the? Okay. Now, what did Paul write about in Galatians 5? Holy Spirit wars against the flesh and the flesh wars against the spirit. In other words, Jesus is telling them, telling them now that the Holy Spirit is coming to be a comforter, an advocate, which is a like a lawyer. He's going to plead your case always. Was the apostle Paul there when Jesus said it? I want that to sink in with you. He was not there. Paul was not there. He could not have known what Jesus said, except somebody either told him, he read it, or what we know is true, he received it by revelation. That's important. Because the only way you and I, we aren't there. And before we read it, we really heard somebody say it. We might not have been convinced of it, but how are we really going to get it where I know that the Holy Spirit is on my side? Revelation. Okay, now let's read what Jesus said. Children or little children, which is a term of endearment, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me or seek me. And what I told the Jews, I tell you now. So he's already stated this. He's now saying it in more definitive terms to some people who can now are mature enough to be able to hear where I, you cannot come. Right. I give you a new law or command or commandment. What is it? Love each other or one another. You must love each other or one another as what? I have loved you. That's the first law or new commandment that Paul talks about as the fruit of the spirit. If you don't figure that out, ain't nothing in your life going to work. Just so I can finish all of it. He says, as I have loved you. Well, that is it. It goes on to all people who know that you are my followers by that. Because, see, ultimately, close your Bibles. I'm finished. Ultimately, I can't use you. Come here, brother. You. Come here. I can't. Stand right there. All day long, I can say, Jim, I love you. 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 Come here, teacher. And Jim is, is in my church. I know him probably better than most around him a long time. And I can say it and say it and say it. But when I go over here and he's not around and I say, did you see what Jim drove up here in? I don't know what he drove up in here. I'm just using an example. Okay. <laughs> did you see what Jim drove up here in? And listen, and I'm, tell, I'm telling you, I am not loving him as Christ loved me. I'm loving him in, as, listen, in such a manner, remember what Paul told them they should not do? Because I want him to gravitate to me. And then I come, hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, I don't care what you do. It ain't going to work. If I have any type of concern, issue. I don't care what it is. Jesus was very clear. Mark, and when, when, when and, 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 you know, he says to them, he said, uh, what is it, Mark uh, 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 11, I think, but I may be wrong here. He says, listen, if I have anything that I want to bring to God, if, 11, thank you, before I bring it to God, and I got issue with what you drove up here in, I got to come to you first and say, brother, forgive me. I forgive you, brother. Mutual. I didn't like the car you drove up in. Because <laughs> I, I want it. <laughs> and, and, and God blessed you with it. But So what I got to do is I got to figure out how God gave it to you. Now y'all laughing, but I'm serious. But see, because see, when I can do that, wouldn't I do that for me? I wouldn't, I wouldn't hold grudge against me. The Bible says no man yet hateth his own flesh. You don't hate yourself. Stop hating on other people. And the subtlety of that is so, so, just that. It's such a thing that, that 
Satan uses it against us, man, and we, don't, we can't figure out why it's not working. And the hardest thing to do is love somebody that lives in your own house. Because you see all their faults. Stand to your feet. Father, I give you praise. Well, by God's grace, we'll pick up next time wherever he, 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 he leads. I want to do something. I've been, it's, one, it's amazing that Cynthia picked up on this because I've been, the other night when we were here on Saturday night, Mike Kaler, I mean Sunday night, last Sunday, Mike Kaler did a masterful job with the word of God. Amen. Those of you that couldn't make it, trust me. What I want you to do is, and I'm going to make this real simple, just pass this around. Just take, take two because I think there's enough to go. Just, just grab any two. Any two, and I'm gonna want them back. So pass it down, pass it down. Come here, I need a, I need a uh, usher, somebody, 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 somebody. Glory to God. Just pass it down, if you would. Just pass it down, pass it back. Take two, just take two. Pass it on this side too. So when you, when they finish on that side, if you would, just pass it over here. And I don't necessarily need you to look at the name. I don't care about the name. Don't look at the name. Um, that's not as important as, as what I want to do here today. So you don't have to. Look. If you looked at the name, look at the name. I don't care. You know. My name is in there. I've looked at him. I know my name is in there. I trust that some of yours is in there. Uh, there's people in there that don't even come to the church anymore. I don't care about that. That means nothing to me. But I want to make sure that this doesn't become just a figurehead for you. Uh, when I come in, I typically like to, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, pray over that. And there are people, I was told this morning, even somebody came to me and mentioned something that the Lord impressed upon their hearts about uh, somebody very close to me in terms of prayer. And uh, just the, the desire of the Lord. So I want to make it intentional this morning. Can we do that? We were, my wife and I were at a church, still passing it around, at a church in Oklahoma uh, a few weeks ago. And, and uh, they had a, uh, a, a, a whiteboard. Was it a whiteboard or something like that? They had a, at the church there in Oklahoma in Duncan. Uh, they had a, a whiteboard where they had names, people's names listed on there. And I said, hey, put Tommy and Lynette on that. Put LifePoint on that, you know. Because they come in before they start their service, they pray over that board. And I would love to see if I could get people praying, man, I tell you what, this church would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even have to be concerned about other things because we're praying. Somebody say amen to that. You know, prayer is, is ultimately very important to what we're trying to do. And so, uh, but particularly over the names, if we're ever going to reach people's lives, we're going to have to touch them. And the best way to do that is through the power of intercession. And it may not seem, uh, it, may, it may not seem effective because you don't see the results of it, but you've got to trust the Holy Spirit, amen? And that's what we're doing this morning. I want to follow that leading and that prompting. So the names that you have in your hand, now please make sure that these names make it back into the bowl, if you would. I want to make sure that that happens as well. But I want to pray over these. I'm going to lead you in prayer uh, over the people that you have. And uh, now if you have somebody's name that's in the service today, don't tell them. Mr. <laughs> Tommy, I prayed for you. Okay, but you can pray for me without telling me. Yeah. You know, I don't need you to tell me that you prayed for me. Yeah. What difference does that make? Yeah. Right? Might make you feel better that you pulled my name. And the winner is, you know, right? So, but just, just, just believe God for whatever, because you don't know what's going on. Even if you prayed for me, you don't know what's life unless the Holy Spirit reveal it to you. And, and, and that's the way it should be. That's the way it absolutely should be. I don't want to know what's going on in your life except the Holy Spirit tell me. Amen? Yeah. Come on now. And if he tells you something that doesn't sound good, that's not for you to go and rebuke and correct. That's for you to love. Come on. Yeah, I ain't saying nothing, but, you know, love, 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 love them. Amen? Amen? Love them. And I'll take the bowl after you finish. I want everybody in the room, even the people in the back, to have a couple of names. So if you would run that back there to them and, and just bring it back to me. Everybody got it? All right. Father, we thank you. Thank you so much. It is in the name of Jesus, Father, that we come before you. And we thank you, God, that this bowl is simply... Look, Tommy right on top. How about that? Tommy praying for Tommy. Father, I thank you so much that it's necessary, necessary. It's a, it's a vital thing with you and it's not something that we take lightly. I recognize that the name that I hold, God, as I hold more than one name, I don't know what they're contending with. I don't know what they're dealing with. I don't even know if they're here today. God, where are they? Holy Spirit, you know exactly where they are. Holy Spirit, you know exactly what they need. Holy Spirit, you know, you know the challenges that they face no matter where they are. God, my opinion of them does not matter to you, but rather my intercession because you said, Jesus, that you would give us an advocate. You would give us a comforter and a counselor. Let the spirit of the counselor, of the advocate, enter into where they are. Some might be in a, in a hotel with no place. Some might be living in their car with no place to land. There, there might be people with no cars, God, that are walking or catching buses, Lord God, and their desires to do more. There might be people today with no money. Whatever the situation, they might be battling depression. They might be battling bipolar. 
their disorder. They might be battling PTSS and PTSD. God, I don't know, but I know that you know. Father, they might be hungry this morning. They might be di uh, distant from their loved ones. Lord, whatever it is, God, wherever they are, would you minister to them today? Would you do it because I asked you to? Would you do it because I entreat this person? I lift them I say right now, give them a better job. Give them a mate that they desire. Give them what they need, God, to be successful in life. Give them hope and a future and a better outcome. Father, I pray right now by the name and in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That you would send fathers back home to families. That you would send mothers back to their families. Father, that grandchildren and grandparents would be reconciled. Father, I pray, I pray, I pray that husbands and wives, God, would find a way. They would find a way, a way that comes only through you and your ability. Father, there are some struggling with disease issues right now. I come against the spirit of depression, of Alzheimer's. I come against the spirit, Lord God, of dementia. In the name of Jesus, I come against the spirit, Lord God, that it would cause people to, to be suicidal. Lord, change their affect, change their surrounding, change their information so that they can see life with a better outcome. In the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Those that are addicted to drugs today, those that are on, on opioids, God, those that are on heroin, God, let there be divine intervention. If we can't get to them right now, you are there. You are there. You are there waiting for somebody to pray. Pray for this person. My hands. God, bring your power and presence to bear. I give you praise. I rejoice, God, in their future. I rejoice in the, in, the, in the plan that you have for them. It doesn't matter what it looks like now. There is a hope and a future and a better outcome for the person who I hold in my hands now. In the name of Jesus. God, let angelic protection be theirs. The devil would like nothing better than to kill them before they accept Jesus Christ as Lord. Let the angels of the Lord encamp round about them. Lord, take your power. We enlist the help, Lord God, of, of, of those who are called to come across the path of the unrighteous. We pray to the Lord of the harvest that you would send forth laborers now. Go, God, to the north, south, east, and west and bring about change change not just something on a Sunday or a temporary basis but lasting change let it come now we decree it to be so we prophesy over their lives come on open it up look at it and, and prophesy over their life call the name out and say God has a plan for you I declare that before you die before you leave the earth you will see the goodness of God in the land of the living call their name out today doesn't matter if you know them or not. If you do know them, don't tell them. Hallelujah. Truly, you shall live and not die and see the works of the Lord. Tell them, you are more than a conqueror, Jimmy. You are more than a conqueror, Sally. Rachel, you are more than a conqueror. Through Christ Jesus. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't quit. Stand in there. That's better. Stand in there. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, be fortified. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Come here. Take this back there if you would, Elder. Please just hold it at the door. That way they can put it in on their way out. Come on, lift your hands in the presence of God. Is there anything else I need to do up here? Can we finish? Stand to your feet. Father, we give you praise. We bless your name. We worship you, God. My God, what a great, amazing Father you are. Words cannot describe your goodness and mercy that you've given unto us. We do the best we can by showing you, God, that by our words and by our actions, God, we are Christians. We are disciples. We are sons and daughters. We're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Hey, give you glory as we go out Lord let our light be so having been so recharged God greater than the lithium greater Lord God than the fuel that flames God let it be so lit up and we go out here and we just glow hallelujah we just glow we just we can 
People can see the light of the glorious gospel. Blinded eyes are open today, Father. Let us take every opportunity to give you praise and to win people to your kingdom. We're eternally grateful. We thank you for the time of your people, for their patience and their love. God, thank you for the harmony that is in this house. We pray for those right now in the name of Jesus that could not be here but desired to be here. And we strengthen them by the power of the Lord. We give you praise. We worship you. If you agree with that prayer, can you say amen? Come on, give the Lord a great big shout of praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We'll see you. Amen. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much.